text this morning comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. This is the Word of God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am, the, am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Here is the reading of God's holy word. May it be a blessing to all that have ears to hear. Will you pray with me? <clears throat> Lord God, come into our heart today. Come into our heart to stay. Open our eyes, Lord God. And let us hear your word. Open our hearts so that we may come closer to you. Lord, help us to receive comfort from you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. Well, as you may have suspected, with the presence of the drums up here on the uh, stage here with me, uh, Jared is here, so I normally like to bring him along because he's a very talented drummer, and uh, I like to use that when possible. So he's here with me this morning, and and uh, we're going to bring you uh, a little different message, uh, one that uh, is in music uh, spoken, and, and I pray that um, your spirit and your heart will be um, spoken to this day. So. The scene is set. All the things have taken place as Jesus knew they would. The setting is the Last Supper. The disciples gathered around the table, enjoying the Passover meal. Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. He has predicted his betrayal to the chief priests by one of his very own people, one of his own disciples. And, and Judas has quietly ducked out of the picture. Jesus has said, Peter, the loyal and vocal Peter, before the rooster crowed the next morning, he would deny his Lord three times. And that's the scenario that the disciples find themselves in. Now I want you to think about that scenario. I want you to think about what the disciples what might have been experiencing in, the, in that moment. The disciples are confused. What's going on here? Jesus, the master, 
the rabbi, the healer, is washing feet? Peter said it best when, you're not going to wash my feet, Lord. If, and Jesus answered, if I don't wash your feet, you don't have anything to do with me. And then Jesus says, I'm supposed to go and do likewise? Jesus, to be betrayed by one of his own friends? Think about that. And Jesus has said that he must die. What are we talking about here? And Peter, Peter, the loyal one, the one that Jesus says, says you're the rock I'm going to build my church on, and Jesus says he's going to deny his Lord three times? He said that he would die for him. You can imagine the emotion. You can imagine all that is going on in that picture. And into this confusion, into this chaos, into this room flowing with emotion, Jesus speaks. I've used this passage several times in my funeral and memorial services. It does speak very well to the grief of the one losing a loved one. For it provides a, a wonderful hope for, for those who die knowing the Lord. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. My father's house is a mansion and has many rooms. I love that picture. I love that picture because I can relate to that. I love building things. I love taking smaller things and making them larger. Creating room and, and doing things with my hand. And I think that the, the disciples could, could understand that as well because Jesus was a carpenter. He, he, liked to, he was a builder. The disciples were fishermen, men of the, the soil and the sea, so that they knew what, what using their hands was all about. But the words that Jesus spoke into that day, into that room of chaos, were not only for the dying or the dead. Those words were not for just the dying or the dead. Those words that Jesus spoke in that place to his friends Words of comfort for the living. These words spoken into the midst of confusion, into the midst of their turmoil and pain, their very foundation of what they believed is shaking. The cornerstone that they've built their faith in The people that they have shared time with, Jesus and the other disciples, those that they have trusted, now they look around at the, the room and say, is it I that's going to betray you, Lord? Everything is changing. Their hearts are indeed very troubled. They have questions that seem to have no answers. And into this, Jesus brings peace. Pat Barrett and Anthony Brown have a song that might help us to understand. The name is Good, Good Father.
heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. Who you are, to you are, to you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am, to I am, to I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers that only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father who you are who you are who you are and i'm loved by you I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love, love, love You're a good, good father Who you are, to you are, to you are And I'm loved by you into all that the disciples are feeling, into all the change that they're experiencing, all the fear and the doubt they maybe have before them. Jesus speaks these words of comfort. God's a good, good father. And you're never alone, guys. But the disciples are very worldly, as we all are, aren't we? And the disciples were looking for a road map. Well, maybe it was a GPS, because who used roads map anymore? The kids, you know, I was surprised that they knew what a map was. Jesus says, I am the way. the truth, and the life. He says, you know the way. You know the truth. You know life. But Philip speaks up, and Thomas says, we don't know where you're going. How do, how, how do we know how to get there? We... And Philip says, Jesus, just show me God, the Father. And we don't need anything else. And with a little exasperation, Jesus says, Philip, how long have I been with you? Anybody, I bet there's a lot of mothers here that, uh, how many times have I told you? Jesus says, Philip, Come on. I've been here. 
And don't you know that the Father is in me? And so once you've seen me, you have seen the Father? But things are changing. And Jesus is saying, you have seen me. You've seen the Father. Now trust. <laughs> yeah. Trust. One of the biggest five-letter words there is in the English language, isn't it? One of the more difficult things that any of us can, can do is to trust. Jesus says, look guys, you've trusted in me thus far, haven't you? And you've trusted in God thus far. Why begin to doubt now? You trust in God. Don't stop now just because things are changing. It's now you need to hold on to, to that most. For God never changes. God can't change. And into that doubt and into that fear, Jesus speaks words of comfort. Mercy Me says it this way, where the hurt and the healer collide. Is overcome by magic. 
majesty when grace is ushered in for good and all the scars are understood when mercy takes its rightful place and all these questions fade away when out of weakness we must bow and hear you say it's over You take my heart and breathe it back to life I fall into your arms open wide When the hurt and the healer collide Jesus come and break my fear Wake my heart and take my tears find your glory ever here the hurt and the healer alive Jesus come and break my fear wake my heart and take my tears find glory even here when hurt and the healer alive It was in the moment of distress for the disciples that Jesus came and spoke into their hearts and says, listen guys, we can do this together. I'm not leaving you. And if you would only know me. What's it mean to really know someone? All kinds of ways we can know folks, isn't it? We can, we can know folks by just being mere acquaintances, right? Those that we pass along the street and we recognize them. Or see them in the coffee shop and we say good morning and, and go on by. And that's one way of knowing someone, isn't it? There's those that we work with. We, we may have a little bit more knowledge about those folks. We may know their kid's name. We may, we may know how they take their coffee. We, we may know a little bit about them, but still it's kind of superficial. And that's not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus says, if you know me, if you've seen me, then you know God the Father and you've seen God the Father. I see it this way. I look into the mirror and what do I see? I see me. A reflection. Christ is the perfect reflection of God for each one of us. And if we see Christ, then we see God. And if indeed that Christ is in God and God is in Christ and we are in Christ and Christ is in us, we have all the power that Christ ever had. Jesus says, I have all the characteristics of God. And God can't lie. That's one of his characteristics. Jesus says, I am the way. Where does peace, comfort, salvation come from? Jesus is the way. It comes from God through Jesus the Christ. What is truth? The very word that God speaks is truth. And what is life? Life abundant. Abundant in Christ. Life that begins now. A life that is patterned after Jesus is a reflection of Jesus' love so that we may know the full joy of the Father God. It's all about faith. 
this passage ends with what seems like an impossible verse. Verse 12 says, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these. Now, I don't know about any of you folks, but I haven't done any miracles lately. I can't say that I have spoken to a mountain and it has moved. But you know, folks, maybe we have. If Christ is in us, if Christ is in our hearts, and if Christ is in God and God is in Christ, then all the power that is Christ, is available to us. What kind of miracles can we do? Have you served the least of these? Have you changed a life because you have provided for them? Have you spoken a word of comfort to one that may be grieving? Have you spoken a word of encouragement to one that may be discouraged? Have you given the love of Christ to another that is desperate to know that, that they're loved, that they're worth something? There's a lot of people out there that don't know that. And if we speak those words, if we allow Christ to speak into their life, then we have performed the miracle. Our lives are transformed. Their lives are transformed. That is a miracle. But what about this talking to a mountain and getting it out of the way? Again, I say, can we speak into a person's situation? How many obstacles have we come up against this week? Obstacles that might keep us from that relationship with one another or relationship with God. There's a lot of mountains that get in our way. Sometimes they're financial. Sometimes they're relational. Sometimes they're in us. The way we feel about ourselves. The way we approach things. And if we can speak into that, if we allow Christ to speak into that, as Christ has speak, spoke to the disciples and to us, then we have moved a mountain. And so Christ says, you're going to do all these things and you're going to do far greater. But it comes from my power. Jeremy Camp has a song that might help us a little. It's called Same Power. see the waters raging at my feet I can feel the breath of those surrounding me I can hear the sound of nations rising up we will not be overtaken we will not be overcome I can walk down this dark and painful road I can face every fear of the unknown I can bear all of God's children singing out We will not be overtaken We will not be overcome Same power that rose Jesus from the grave Same power that commands a dead to raise Lives in us Lives in us Same power that moves mountain when he speaks same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us, lives in us, lives in us, lives in us. We have hope that his promises are true and his strength. There is nothing we can do, we have no there are greater things in store We will not be overtaken We will not be overcome 
same power that rose Jesus from the grave same power that commands the dead to wake lives in us lives in us same power that moves mountains when he speaks same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us lives in us lives in us lives in us greater is he that is living in me in front good man, man of me no power of darkness no weapon prevail we stand here the grave same power that commands the dead to raise lives in us lives in us lives in us lives in us same power that moves mountains when he speaks same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us lives in Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come, follow me. Let me speak comfort into your life. Some of us today may be experiencing turmoil or, or big questions. Or uh, Let Jesus speak into your life. Peace and comfort. There may be those suffering disease or illness. Let Jesus speak strength into your life. Maybe there's a mountain that's in our way today that we can't seem to, to climb over. We can't find our way around it. Let Jesus speak to that mountain in our lives and allow it to move. The same power that Jesus had in him, we have in us. Amen. Thank you, Jared.